I wrote this book for one reason, an event that may have happened when you were very young but still resonates with a lot of Americans, and that is the Bush v. Gore recount in Florida in 2000. For 47 days, we didn't know who the president-elect would be. Uh, we had court cases. We had demonstrations. We had charges back and forth that make even the uh, mud wrestling on cable television today look tame. It was a mess. In the end, the Supreme Court had to intervene. Uh, I don't agree that it was a 5-4 vote. I think it was a 7-2 vote that Florida was miscounting uh, the vote in, at that time, but it was a 5-4 vote to have the vote count stop. And a lot of Americans never thought that election was legitimate. And I think it damaged the Bush presidency, and I think the bad feelings that have come from that resonate with us today. This November, each political party will have 10,000 lawyers monitoring the election. If there are any irregularities, if there's any sloppiness, if there's any fraud, you can bet that this will go to court. We came only a few thousand votes away from John Kerry challenging the Ohio election results in 2004, and that could have launched the same process all over again. Walter Dean Burnham, the Dean of American Political Scientists, say we have the sloppiest election systems of any industrialized democracy. That was true then, it's true now. We still have time to take remedial steps before the November election to minimize the sloppiness, to minimize the incompetence, to minimize the fraud. Now, fraud has a storied history in American life. Uh, I'd just like to read you something that uh, actually involves college students. Uh, I live in New Jersey. New Jersey had one of the most corrupt political machines ever, <laughs> Jersey City. Frank, I am the law Hague. That was the mayor there for 40 years. Why did he say, I am the law? Because that's what it was. He was the law. Listen to this. In 1935, the Honest Ballot Association, the do-gooders of their day, sent 245 Princeton College students to monitor a city election. Higgs ruffians beat up five of them within an hour of their arrival. Several others ejected from a polling place went to the mayor's office to protest and met with the mayor. Quote, well, you fellows go back there if you wish, but if you ever get knocked cold, it'll be your own hard luck, he told them. Later, Haig explained that the roughing up involved, quote, animal spirits, that's all. I told my boys to lay off, but it was a pretty dull election, and they couldn't resist the temptation to have a little fun, unquote. The Jersey Journal asked in a disgusted editorial, where were the deputies? Uh, to prevent this violence and fraud. Some of them were locked up in the police station. Some were stuck on corners with a threat that if they moved from them, a nightstick would be wrapped around their necks. The only way to have an honest election in Hudson County under present conditions is with the militia, unquote. Now, we've improved a little bit since then, but there are still places in this country, the border areas of Texas, rural counties in Alabama, Detroit, Chicago, of storied election fraud fame, Philadelphia, where election fraud is real, Election, the threat of election fraud is ever-present. And to give you an example, in Philadelphia and many other cities around this country, there are more registered voters than there are adults over the age of 18, according to the U.S. Census. We call that a clue that something is mischief in the air. Now, what can we do about this? Well, there are simple steps. Have a photo ID to present at the polls and clean up absentee balloting. Absentee ballots are the tool of choice for fraudsters because you can register, apply for a ballot, send in your ballot, and in many cases, never have to present yourself, never prove who you say you are. Kansas has done a very good reform. They require a photo ID now. They also require that you have a legitimate excuse to ask for an absentee ballot. It shouldn't be convenience voting. Uh, we should make an effort to vote on Election Day after all the people have the same information. After all, if you vote too early, as many states allow, you have people voting before the last debates are finished. In addition, when you apply for an absentee ballot, you have to give them the last four or five digits of your Social Security number or your driver's license number, and that conducts down fraud dramatically. Now, we are told that this is voter suppression. We are told that this is a return to the Jim Crow laws, that this is a poll tax. Well, frankly, hooey. Eighty percent of Americans support photo ID at the polls. 
Pollsters tell me that this is a higher percentage for any issue, even higher than motherhood or apple pie, because some people are estranged from their mothers and some people don't like apple pie. <laughs> Two-thirds of Hispanics, African Americans, other minority voters support photo ID at the polls. In fact, Rasmussen asked, do you believe voter fraud is a serious or somewhat serious issue? 63% of whites said yes, 64% of African Americans said yes. Part of the reason for that is African Americans in some places live in places where a machine controls the political life that they live under. The machine delivers bad services for high taxes and frankly allows the crime rates to skyrocket. The machine is corrupt. The biggest victims of voter fraud in this country that I've interviewed are minority reformers in urban areas where political machine controls their destiny and they can't fight City Hall because the election is stolen out from under them. Kwame Kilpatrick, the mayor of Detroit, who until very recently was serving in public housing after a conviction for crimes, he won his second term in part because of a flood of fraudulent absentee ballots. The city clerk of Chicago, I'm sorry, of Detroit lost her job immediately after that, and they've cleaned up the voter rolls to some extent since then. I believe if we don't address this problem, we are asking for another Florida-style meltdown. Now, my position is very clear. We should extend free photo IDs to anyone who doesn't have one. I believe it's a small number. In fact, any time this issue comes before a court, uh, the people who claim that 5, 10 percent of people lack IDs can never present any evidence. The best evidence we have is that it's a very, very small, tiny number. We also know this because in Indiana and Georgia, the states with the toughest voter ID laws, turnout has gone up, both minority turnout and overall turnout. And it went up not just in the 2008 Obama election, but in the 2010 midterm election when Obama wasn't on the ballot. If there are people out there who lack a photo ID, let's get them one. As Andrew Young, the former mayor of Atlanta and former confidant of Martin Luther King said, you can't participate in the mainstream of American life without a photo ID. You can't travel, you can't check into a hotel, you can't cash a check, you can't enter a government building, you can't rent, rent a video. You can hardly do anything. Let's get people a free ID. We're doing them a favor. Instead, the critics of photo ID laws, rather than try to help people get IDs, they simply yell racism in a crowded political theater further exacerbating racial and political tensions in this country. Chris Dodd, the de former Democratic senator from Connecticut who crafted a bipartisan election reform bill in 2002 after the Florida meltdown, was quoted as saying the goal of American law when it comes to elections should be to make it easy to vote and hard to cheat. We're Americans. We can do both. There are two civil rights in this country. One is the right to never be prevented or intimidated from voting. We had a sorry history in many states in the 1950s and 1960s. Poll taxes, literacy tests, uh, bizarre registration hours, which blocked many Americans from voting. We passed a Civil Rights Law and a Voting Rights Act to prevent that. We need to preserve and extend those gains. But there's a second civil right. Each and every one of you have the right not to have your vote canceled out by someone who shouldn't be voting, someone who is an illegal alien, someone who's died, someone who's moved out of state, someone who's voting twice, or someone who doesn't even exist. That too violates your civil rights. And we can do both. Make it easy to vote and hard to cheat. Now, an obstacle to this is, to reference the previous speaker on Fast and Furious, the Eric Holder Justice Department. The Eric Holder Justice Department claims there is no voter fraud in America. They claim that these voter ID laws are equivalent to poll taxes. Eric Holder himself just said that. They are suing any state that they can, saying their voter ID law is unconstitutional, even though it's been upheld by the Supreme Court. In fact, the opinion was written by John Paul Stevens, the most liberal member of the court at the time of the decision in 2006. So where are we with the Eric Holder Justice Department? A complete stonewall. Well, this is no accident. The President of the United States got his start with these issues. His first major political job in Chicago for Barack Obama was with a group called Project Vote. It was a voter registration effort that registered 135,000 people in Illinois in 1991 and 1992. Project Vote 
was allied with and an affiliate of ACORN. How many of you ever heard of ACORN? ACORN was the most notoriously